Hi, people. Um, when I talk about issues around gender and sex, uh, I'm particularly acutely aware of the language that I use in the title of the video, because by nature it can be polarizing and divisive, and I, I don't want to do that. At least I want to avoid it as much as possible. But in keeping with the theme of this channel, I want to talk about things I think are important. And I accept that sometimes those things will be controversial. Um, so, for example, the subject matter of this video, if I were to put the word feminism in the title of feminist, um, I think some people, even without watching the video, would have an instinctive knee-jerk reaction that, oh, it's a guy criticising feminism. And that's not really what it's about. It's part of it, for sure, in this video, but um, that's why I I always try to be careful with wording on anything around men and women, because it can be so easily misunderstood. And that's really a pity, um, because we're all human beings, so it shouldn't be so divisive. But fortunately, it can be. Um, so, uh, why misandry? Why talk about this? Well, the word itself, uh, basically, it means hatred of men and boys. But I would argue that a bit like misogyny, it should be extended a little bit to mean hostility to men and boys. It doesn't necessarily have to mean, excuse me, blind hatred. Because very often nowadays when the word misogyny is used, it's not quite literally meaning hatred of women and girls. It could mean mistreatment of women or girls or disrespect of women and girls. It's not necessarily, I hate women. So if it's okay to use that term in such a flexible way, then I don't see why misandry shouldn't also be more flexible in terms of its usage. Uh, personally, I think words shouldn't be thrown around casually anyway, but... You know, they are out there. Um, the word misandry is nowhere near as widely used. Um, and there will be people who say it doesn't even exist. You know, um, you will very rarely see the word misandry printed in a newspaper or in an op-ed or anywhere else. And I question why. The word isn't made up. It's a real word. But it just isn't as widely um, used. Could it be that men don't particularly care about the issue? Could it be that um, feminists have done a very good job of keeping it down? I you know it's not valid, so I don't know what it is. Um, and let me be very clear, I am not for a second saying that the situation for men and women, especially on a worldwide scale, is the same. I'm not saying that at all. I think men and women face challenges in different ways. Let's look at violence, for example. Um, violence, and this can mean in terms of violent crime, it can mean in terms of domestic violence, it can mean in terms of war. Um, all of those three, um, the hardest to gauge is probably domestic violence because it's so much of it happens behind closed doors. But when we look at war and violent crime, um, men are probably overwhelmingly the victims. Um, a feminist acquaintance of mine recently said she claimed without any evidence that women have been disproportionately affected in Ukraine. Um, I responded, well, what, what's the basis for that? Because it's men who have been compelled to stay and fight. And yes, a lot of civilians have died, which is a damning indictment of Russia's actions. Um, but, you know, the fact of the matter is most of the refugees have been women and children, some older men. Um, but the fact of the matter is Zelensky, rightly or wrongly, um, made a law that Ukrainian fighting age men had to stay. So they are literally, um, their life is on the line. Uh, and I think, I've said this before, I really think the Ukraine war really smashes the misconception of male privilege, um, as has pretty much every war in history. In fact, I watched a documentary a while back, it was Ken Burns' documentary, on the Old West, he, he was famous for doing very long, uh, in-depth style documentaries. But there was one Native American uh, group, I forget which one it was, but um, apparently the Braves of that particular tribe 
it would be better for them to die in battle than to go home and face the women. In other words, the shame of their carnage would be such that their lives wouldn't be worth living. So in every culture, you can find this example of male honour and uh, the stigma of male carnage. I, I've always felt that um, the stigma of carnage is much, much more impactful on men than it is on women. I mean, if a woman's called a card, it's it's not it's not nice, but I don't think it has the same stigma. It just doesn't, not to the same extent anyway, um, because of the way that men have historically been viewed. Um, but when I'm talking about misandry, um, I'm talking about particularly vocal militant feminists like Dr. Charlotte Proudman. I know I've mentioned her a bit recently, uh, the risk of sounding like I'm obsessed by her. Um, I just think she's a good example because she seems to be utterly, utterly oblivious to any sense of introspection, any sense, or maybe I'm being a bit generalising here, or maybe uh, I'm making sweeping statements because what feminists like her do, I think is quite manipulative. What they do is they make these sweeping inflammatory statements, usually directed at men, right? And then they might be targeted by some guys who don't like it. And sometimes that targeting goes too far. It can become misogynistic and crass. So then what they do is they highlight that and say, oh, well, look, this just proves that I, as a woman, am a target of sexism. Um, or maybe you're just a controversial person that has worked up a lot of people. And that's no excuse for sexist messages. But um, it's a little bit like that interview with uh, Jordan Peterson and Kathy Newman. Uh, one of the most biased um, interviews I've ever seen. You know, Newman went in with a clear agenda to try and Peterson on the spot. I, I think she actually liked professionalism. And actually, I don't think she's a terrible journalist. She's a senior journalist. She has a lot of experience. But that interview, I think she really let herself down. Anyway, what happened? Um, Peterson fans and, and yeah, men uh, rounded on her. And now, I think that's a mistake because it's what feminists want. You know, they love nothing more than to play the victim. So um, it worked, unfortunately. Then she said, well, this is what happens when a woman is criticised. Um, of course, it ignores the fact that men who are targets of feminism are facing f criticising feminist circles. Um, there was that incident a few years ago where the scientist, get, I think it was in NASA, actually, um, he wore a, a kind of comic book style T-shirt. I was a little bit... Um, I guess it showed some naked ladies or something on it. It had been given to him by a girlfriend or a female friend, and it was it was light-hearted in nature. Enemy feminists immediately lambasted this, and the unfortunate thing about it was this was kind of uh, some big breakthrough. I I don't follow the world of science very closely, so I can't remember precisely what it was. But with some big technological breakthrough, think of Sheldon or Leonard in Big Bang Theory, right? Imagine those guys in some sort of breakthrough. It's that sort of situation. Um, and it got hijacked by feminists criticising what the guy was wearing. Ironically, the same feminists would say, oh, women should wear whatever they want, don't criticise them. Um, the double standards are nauseating. Um, but I do think if, if we're going to call out misogyny, we should call out misandry too, by which I mean these crass generalisations. And the worldview the worldview that women are not capable of doing bad things. Uh, Charlotte Proudman really exhibits this. Uh, I'm new to Twitter, and I've, you know, I've come across her Twitter account. She's, you know, she's comparing headlines to prove how misogynistic it is, to show how the terrible misogynistic world is against Amber Heard. Now, I would concede that yes, there are some depth fans who are are being a bit childish about this. The way that they're posting these silly memes, they're splicing videos, it, it doesn't help. And um, I can see that. But there are a lot of us looking at that trial um, in an objective way. Um, I don't trust Depp 100%. Um, I don't think he's quite the saint that some are making him out to be. Um, but 
I think that the best trust of Amber Heard has a lot more to do with the way she has behaved, the way she has been recorded on audio abusing her partner, the way she has previously had um, abuse allegations against her from other partners, female partners. Um, she just lacks credibility. Now, my issue with someone like Charlotte Proudman is she is incapable of even trying to comprehend that. Her brain sort of goes, woman must be innocent, misogynist attacking her, sexism. The frustrating thing about someone like Charlotte Proudman is she just cannot fathom that maybe, just maybe, Amber Heard has been abusive. But no, uh, Johnny Depp's rich and famous, and he's older, therefore he's got all the power, so he must be the abusive one. That's her line of thinking, basically. And it's... I don't want to exaggerate her influence. Um, I mean, I'm not suggesting that she is super powerful in terms of influence, but, uh, you know, she's a pretty vocal barrister, self-described feminist barrister, and, um, you know, with that sort of legal power, she... It's quite concerning, actually, when someone like that is in a position of authority. I mean, lawyers have power. So if her worldview is so extremely biased, I um, I would honestly question the fairness of a defendant in a trial that she's presiding over. Now, of course, a good lawyer is uh, the whole point of their job is to make a convincing case. But given the sort of things she's been putting out, given the utter, utter bias, the, the failure to even comprehend um, that there may be another side is just shows the worldview that these sort of feminists take. Um, and, you know, like I've said before, I think it's very difficult to even debate with them um, because the whole prism of their way of thinking is you're a man. Uh, so you're you're attacking me because I'm a woman. That's a whole argument, pretty much. And if you're a woman and you criticize feminists, then you're a traitor to the cause. So I find them some of the most narrow-minded people around, those sort of feminists. I'm not talking about women who uh, simply care about women's rights and they are involved in, in some campaigning. I'm talking about a certain kind of feminist who will go out of her way to present this worldview as being fundamentally against women. Um, getting back to the world context that I mentioned, though, um, men are much more likely to be victims of violence in a world in a world context. You know, uh, it is men who fight and die in war. It is men who are more likely to be uh, victims of gang violence. But this is not to say that women aren't targeted uh, disgracefully. Um, in an abhorrent way, women are used as, um, you know, rape targets in war, particularly in countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo, where it's an endemic crisis. And there is a problem with uh, femicide in parts of Latin America. Um, the track record of honour killings, sometimes it's directed at men, but um, particularly at women, is absolutely disgusting and shameful. Um However, with that, again, I'd say that some Western liberals make false moral equivalencies, like somehow it's the same for women all over the world. It's not. Clearly, some cultures treat women worse than others. Um, but, you know, we, we have to look at the facts in terms of something that homicide rates doesn't lie. The majority of homicide victims are men. and The majority of suicides are men. Those are not invented statistics. Those are things that can be verified. Um, like I say, the issue with domestic abuse and violence is a lot harder to gauge in terms of statistics. A lot of the time it isn't reported. That is very hard to gauge. Um, I certainly think there are far, far fewer facilities for men. Again, something the likes of Charlotte Proudman wouldn't acknowledge um, because in, in her world, it never happens. Um, Unless I'm mistaken, in the whole of England and Wales, there is one, one outreach centre for men who are victims of domestic abuse. And pretty much every town or city has one for women. In fact, there's one at the end of my street. Um, and that's good. Uh, it's good that women have those facilities. But I would say if 
uh, more men come forward than the facility should be provided. But the other um, manipulative thing that you will get there is feminists will say, oh, well, male victims of domestic abuse, they must have deserved it, or it's just the woman defending herself. I mean, I would, I would honestly say that when you get someone like Charlotte Proudman or Katie Edwards going out of their way to defend Amber Heard, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say they're apologists for abuse. But they get away with it, or they think they get away with it, because the person they're defending is a woman. Imagine if uh, Depp was actually found guilty in this Fairfax trial, um, and then said, oh, well, she probably deserved it. Imagine the outcry if it was proven that Depp was violent. So far, I don't believe it's been proven. I mean, the issue about he apparently punched Amber Heard with his rings, now, you've seen them, they're big chunky rings. If a man punches a woman with rings, she's going to be more than cut. She's going to be absolutely bruised up. That's just common sense. Just common sense. And for a lawyer, you know, Charlotte Proudman seems to ignore basic common sense. She said that uh, Depp lost his UK trial. That's true. And I suppose we can't ignore that. Um, but I don't know what sort of things came up in that trial. British justice on like American justice isn't particularly transparent. So who knows what was in or out in terms of testimony. Um, so I wouldn't put too much on that as I think our justice system, system isn't transparent. I've often criticised our justice system. Ironically, so has Charlotte Proudman, but for different reasons. Um, I'm going to wrap this up soon. You know, the sad thing about all of this is I think the worst thing that can happen is if it just ends up in a battle of the sexes. Like men say this, women say that. And I'm always very, very careful not to polarise women in general. I won't apologise for my criticism of hardline feminism. I think it's obnoxious. I think it's misandry. Um, and I think it needs to be called out. Um, I saw an exchange in the Australian Parliament not long ago. Well, to be honest, I don't know what year it was, but it was also fairly recently. And there was a female MP basically uh, accusing her opponent of mansplaining. He turned it around and said, well, wait a second. If I use the term womansplaining, that wouldn't sit. And she sort of, she didn't even have an excuse for it. She said, oh, well, well it's just a word. And um, I'm pleased he called it out. Um, you know, Australia is, of course, with Julia Gillard famous made her sexism speech. Uh, it may well be that there's sexism, anti-female sexism in Australian politics. I'm not I'm not going to say that there isn't. And I will say this, I think there are some Tories with a bad attitude to women. I think it's there is a problem somewhat similar to the Metropolitan Police. I think there are some Tories who seem to think uh, Michael Fabricant recently made some joke about uh, his colleague who is suspended under suspicion of um, of rape. And Fabricant made some inappropriate joke about that. That's just crass. You know, it doesn't help anyone. So I I believe in calling out men who are making crude sexist comments, yeah. But I just think there should be consistency. And I don't see why feminists should get away with um, a sexist worldview. It's as simple as that. I don't think they should get away with those attitudes because they're damaging. There's real world implications when the same feminists start lobbying for legislation. Um... Ultimately, we're all individuals and we cannot be defined as men or women. Um, there's many, many issues I haven't brought into this video. Um, but th this, this worldview that feminists have, that men are princes of privilege and we can just do what we want and we can, it is, it is so, so distorted. It's so distorted. Because there are a lot of challenges men face that they just casually ignore. Um, they don't care about. Um, and it's it, it's quite grating, to be honest, because when you have that level of dishonesty and it's put out there and then it's, it's wrapped up uh, in victimhood, it's just obnoxious. It really is. Um, I would say this, though. Um, People who are blatantly sexist, who make really misogynistic comments, attitudes, um, misandric 
comments, attitudes. All they do is fuel those who want to be divisive. I think these people are probably a minority, at least in this country. Um, but unfortunately, they, they're vocal. Idiots tend to be vocal. So they give the impression that there is a wider problem than there probably is. Um, take, for example, the issue of men stepping up that we heard after uh, Sarah Everard was killed in London. Um, the implication is that men don't step up. Um, so this this idea that if a guy sees a woman being attacked in the street, he's just going to look the other way. I honestly believe the vast majority of British men would act. Indeed, I think the majority of men around the world would. Maybe in some situations they wouldn't because of a more reserved culture. But this idea that men would just turn the other way, I think most men would either um, intervene physically or call the police or do something. This idea men need to step up. Um, and yet there's so many contradictions, isn't there, with feminism? Take, for example, online dating. And I know I'm going off a bit on a tangent here because there's a lot of different subjects, perhaps I should break them up. But just to give this as a closing example, um, men are expected to make the first move with dating. That's the convention. Even feminists probably believe it. So a man makes the first move. Um, now, what's to say he has to make the judgment, is this appropriate or not? Common sense would tell you if it's overtly sexual, or aggressive or anything like that, it's not appropriate, right? But in the world of Charlotte Prideman, any communication can be sexual harassment. So as a scenario, if he says, hello, hope you don't mind the message. Uh, it seems we have a number of things in common. If you have time, would you like to chat? By the way, you have a nice smile. Oh, but that last bit is sexual harassment. So romance is killed. Um, now, to me, that is extremely different from, hey, babe, you're gorgeous, show me your, I won't be crude, but you get the picture. Clearly, two very, very different examples. But to certain feminists, it's exactly the same. So basically, men are in this constant situation where they have to think, am I going to be accused of harassment? And that will actually scare guys from making the move, and then women will complain, oh, no man looks at me. So I do think Me Too has had a damaging impact on, on romance, frankly. Um, it's good that misogynistic men, sleazy men are called out, of course it is, but I do think it's gone too far for the reasons I've said. Um, right, I'm going to wrap this up, but yeah, I'm sick and tired of a minority of feminists who think that they can get away with their, their blatant sexism. And I say they think they can get away with it, unfortunately more often than not they do. I'll just show you this as an example. The I newspaper, national newspaper, is quoting Charlotte Proudman by her track record. Um, because they're, they're citing her as an expert. I guess under the rules that she is called, you know, she's a barrister. I would say, incidentally, the, the way that I and The Guardian have covered the debt, her trial, is really, really biased. Uh, that's her piece from a few days ago. Women won't report abuse after trial ridicule. Uh, well, it would be unfortunate if sincere women were put off because of Amber Heard. But again, the fact that the situation has finally turned around, and this is a case where people are actually believing the man for once, doesn't mean that um, you know it, it should be a situation of the battle of the sexes, whereby women are... Uh, well, women are no longer going to be believed. That would be wrong. People shouldn't assume every woman is Amber Heard. That would be wrong and sexist. But again, the focus of Charlotte Proudman is solely on uh, women. Oh, well, poor women will, won't be able to report this um, because of the way this particular woman has been portrayed. It's, it's nauseating. Uh, I just think her worldview is, frankly, toxic. Um... But, you know, I don't want to exaggerate her influence. Okay, um, that's my stance. Thanks for watching.